Hey, this is big yep. news from NPR. President Biden signs law to ban TikTok nationwide unless it's sold. And uh, it wasn't just that. The bill also gives $95 billion in aid to Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan. <laughs> you literally, you can't do anything without giving billions of dollars in aid to Ukraine. It's, it's like, crazy how they're all linked, you know? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that'd be funny. There's it's like, we have, a, we have a bill to provide school lunches to children and give $7 billion to Ukraine. <laughs> it's everything, like, uh, all the time. And then when you vote against it, they're like, so you don't want kids to eat lunch? Exactly. Crazy. Exactly. Well, is so, this, so, is so this the same bill that was like last month? It was passed through one? Yes. Uh, okay. And I didn't hear that a, much about the the U Ukraine and uh, well they added they they they, they put they them in one it? yeah oh, they okay. put them in one bill and uh, that was to basically guarantee all these things pass because Congress is corrupt and it's what they do but uh, the component we have here is that uh, TikTok will now be banned unless it's sold and so uh, this is really funny I, I love this so the reason why TikTok is facing a ban is because of Israel it's because. Uh, a couple of years ago, Donald Trump wanted to ban TikTok because it's it's pushing far left uh, ideology and things like this. But the argument was, oh, it's um, stealing your data, which I mean, it, it's, give, it's taking your data and it's giving it to uh, the Chinese Communist Party in, in essence, I suppose. And the uh, Democrats were like, no, no, don't. We won't ban it. The Supreme Court blocked it. Then October 7th happened. And a bunch of content was pro-Israel on TikTok. And then a week later, it shifted heavily into pro-Israel. Many suggested that meant there was a, 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 an algorithm. It was weighted. It was pushing pro-Palestinian content. Or it could have been organized groups were manipulating TikTok to do this. All of a sudden, Democrats now get on board with banning TikTok. Why? Well, donors started calling them. And this is all true. This is all public knowledge. This, it's in numerous interviews. Large donors who were Jewish and uh, pro-Israel so even evangelicals were calling TikTok, I'm sorry, we're calling Democrats, not TikTok, and saying, why are you allowing this app to indoctrinate young people in this way? Democrats then got on board. But my favorite thing about it is all of that is public and true. And it's like, I've tweeted it probably 12 times, but these, these Israel derangement syndrome people are like, whoa, look at Tim. He's waking up. He's figuring it out. And I'm like, maybe you should have watched the show when they literally announced it. That's exactly what we said when we had the news. But this could mean the end of TikTok. And I'm for it. Don't care. Sorry. But, Let me show you this tweet from uh, Nuance Bro. He says, I'm going to be pretty, I'm, I'm going to be petty about this. TikTok banned me about two years ago. It allegedly wasn't even due to my content. They apparently thought I was someone impersonating myself or something. I offered to do whatever verification they needed so they could verify that I am deed myself, but they refused and they said the decision was final. Pretty sure they just look for any excuse to ban people that aren't leftists. But at the end of the day, it's looking like I'll get the last laugh. If they didn't ban me, maybe I'd join others in calling for TikTok not to get banned, but they want to engage in some of the worst censorship of any platform and then cry about the government doing the same to them. Sorry, I have no sympathy. And I actually agree with Nuance Bro. Now, Lisa Elizabeth, Lisa Reynolds, who actually works here, says this might be a low IQ post laughing emoji, but- it takes uh, one to no one, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll stress, Tim Cast IRL was banned, and it was because in one segment, we were discussing um, data that showed Women in the workplace have, have the highest rates, uh, uh, highest rates of depression for all female demographics. So like single mothers, uh, married with children, and you know, married with children in the workplace, not working. S women who were at work had higher rates of depression compared to all other groups, so that in, in any capacity. Simply for showing the data, banned. And then they make, and it's not the first time either. They, they ban you and you can make a new account. And so we've been restricted and censored. And I'm telling you, Perhaps it is personal bias, but we know that TikTok is pushing like creepy progressive propaganda. You're right about that. They allow some conservative stuff on there, but it is pressure release valve stuff. So there's been a lot of people who are like, no, there's conservative content on TikTok. You got to understand. I'm like, yes. And what they're doing is 60% is leftist and 40% is, is conservative. That way, conservatives feel like they're still here, but they're intentionally suppressing the right yep. and making sure that the left gets front and center stage so that young people lose their mind and, and cause themselves harm. I don't think that should be allowed. And although it's bad that they've got wa warrantless wiretapping on us, that shouldn't be allowed either. I'd rather have the United States government spying on me than the Chinese government, because at the very least I can file FOIA requests, I can file lawsuits. It's extremely difficult to go up against the U.S. government and their surveillance apparatus, but it's impossible to go up against China. So I'll take what I can get. But I actually agree with Nuance Bro. TikTok is the most censorious platform followed by Facebook. They are the worst. And Instagram. 
And I'm supposed to shed a tear for TikTok now that they might get banned unless they sell to U.S. interests? Sorry, Crimea River. Also, I just want to mention one thing. I do think it's hilarious that they have the option to sell to American interests or to an American company is if that would ever do anything to eliminate the Chinese influence. I mean, well, so much I, of corporate America I, is at the beck and call of the CCP. Sure. And like, of course, it would be better if they were owned by an American company. I but can, at this point, I'm just saying, I think it's great to get rid of it. I think it's great to get rid of it. Um, I, I, I'm if, not thrilled look, that that clause is even in there. I would if, just, it's, if it's sold to U.S. interests, the content will be moderately similar, woke, far left, psychotic mm -hmm. garbage. However, it will be a bit more difficult to censor because we will have the ability to sue mm -hmm. the owners who are Americans. Good luck suing China. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, they, yeah. they ban you, they ban you. And now you've got the CEO being like, 175 million Americans are using this app. And I'm like, yeah, that's a case for you getting banned. You get, no, exactly. You're, you're explaining how widespread the problem is. Why, why? China would never. They would <laughs> never allow this. Uh. China doesn't allow the U.S. to run companies in its country. Why would we allow that's China right. to have ownership control or a stake or a board seat in any capacity that has such a massive influence on our economy, yeah. let alone the minds of our young people. Well, Yuri and, Bezmenov, mm -hmm. is, he, is he still alive? He's not alive, I don't right? know. He's the former KGB fellow. He's alive? Oh, okay. I was going to say he's spinning in his grave, so now he's, he's spinning he's, his rocking chair uh -huh. then. Uh -huh. He's rocking in his chair. But no, I, I would uh, agree with you. Um, the Chinese government is, is not uh, in any way uh, a fan of the United States of America. And we know that they understand the way we think way better than we no, understand no, he died the way a long that they time ago. think. He died yeah. 30 years ago. <laughs> yes, Serge. So he's, he's, he's spinning in his grave. Um, but China has done things like uh, stood in solidarity with George Floyd and the BLM riots and called the American system racist, even though like in order to sell Star Wars films in China, Disney has to decrease the size of black actors on their posters, right? China is a, a very racist country, but they also know that racism is something that really tugs at the heartstrings of Americans that Americans care about. They know our buzzwords, And, and so, yeah. exactly, they know how to manipulate us. The fact that they know how to manipulate us so well, uh, and they're running this service, this social media service that millions of Americans are using, yeah, it should give people cause. Yeah. pause. And I think, again, it, it's an argument for banning it to say 174 million Americans, whatever the numbers are using it. There's a, a sort of salty post on Axios right now pointing out that the Biden administration is, or the Biden re-election campaign is continuing to be active on TikTok, even though he just signed this oh, really? bill. Yeah, I, it's one of these well, things that, you know, we talked about uh, Palestine a little bit, and there's a division between young left-leaning or progressive voters and, and older uh, left voters. But I almost wonder if so being the president that banned TikTok is going to be just another way that Biden loses the youth vote right now. I I am not necessarily saying that he shouldn't have signed it or the, that the TikTok ban is bad. I just think that like it is surprising to me that Joe Biden, who's trying to be like the cool hip grandpa, is now <laughs> taking away TikTok from these people mm -hmm. he's trying to court during an election year. Yeah. I'm a little torn because I've obviously I basically in 2019 it was when uh, musically turned into TikTok. I and remember. Yeah. It's that's when I was representing the biggest TikTokers in the world. I represented Charlie D'Amelio, Addison Rae, uh, Charlie I think, and her sister makes 17 million dollars a year, um, and they were just called you know high school kids that basically blew up overnight. Um, but to see how quickly. Uh, TikTok has become drunk with power, it seems like. I remember in 2019, they were just so happy if I referred them a celebrity that would get on and uh, they would uh, verify just about anybody. And now uh, you're seeing that they, and over the years I've seen this, that they are they do like events for only black creators. They do events for only LGBTQ. And, you know, it's, it's very woke in the sense of that. And then even in the beginning, there was, uh, like in 2019, there was uh, people I represented that, you know, if they, if they danced in a bikini, they, they would get banned or they would get uh you weren't allowed to go live for a couple of weeks and so what happens is like people start to follow the rules right you fall in line okay well i guess i can't post with my shirt off or you know with even if you're a guy so they they fall in line but then they also see okay well you know, conservatives can't get uh, verified on there. Like Joe Pags, he's a big time uh, radio host. He has tons of followers and tons of views. And he's like, I can't get verified on TikTok for whatever reason. And then EV Magazine, Brittany was uh, messaging me because I used to have an in over there. Now they don't really pick up my call as much, but I EV do. He doesn't? 
Uh, no, no, TikTok. Oh, okay. No, Evie, like, Evie wow. asked me for help because um, they were, they're not able to advertise their, uh, I guess it's like anti uh, birth control uh, program or I don't know if it's, um, I don't know what it is. They were selling something that was doing well on TikTok mm -hmm. and now they got kicked off of the, of the shop. And I, I think it's because like either the Washington Post or whoever called in and was like, why is this on TikTok? And then they just shut you down. I mean, I had a, a direct access. Everybody was nice to me at TikTok. And then Taylor Renz writes a bad article and I can't get one person on the phone. So it's very uh, much of a class system with the social media things. And like, Tim, you're talking about you're experiencing it with YouTube. I mean, so many people, I think it's like 86% of people 13 to 38 want to become content creators. Think about what a big population is that. And then you're talking about who controls it. Facebook or, you know, Meta, TikTok, there's only, it's all these monopolies. And I've been paying attention to uh, David Sachs. So he has the opposite opinion. And, and I do sort of think it's important to listen to guys like that. He's a, a VC guy. He invested in like Facebook, Uber, Airbnb, smart guy talking to all the people at the top and you know he ha he's very much against the TikTok ban so I don't know I don't really know uh, I definitely and then there's a, a girl that was saying that they're they're going to start doing uh, class action lawsuits I don't know if, it, if that's a, to, to the government for shutting down and people losing their income the uh, creator was saying that they don't think that it's going to happen for a long time. Like there's going to be a lot of pushback. They lose in two seconds. The the bill will never actually formally ban TikTok. It can't do that. It would restrict TikTok from appearing on the app and Play Store and using U.S. servers, which means they would simply say uh, the app still exists. They're still able to use it. But are they going to tie up this whole thing in litigation for years until? Yeah, it can probably. Yeah, TikTok's going to sue. The Supreme Court might even strike this down and say, you can't do this, which is kind of troublesome in that sense. I mean, China is an adversary of the United States. It's tough. I get it. But we can't allow China well, to have a foothold in our economy this strong well, to the point where people would sue the government. Like, I mentioned this. China controls a portion of our economy. It's not a big, well, it's arguably a big portion with manufacturing, but in TikTok. So the U.S. government says, OK, this is a problem for us, so we're going to shut it down. And the American people sue the American government to keep China in control of this economic uh, machine. Well, exactly. And you, OK, you have to ask the question, too. Like, let's say the Supreme Court, uh, or this goes to the Supreme Court, uh, and it's argued that this is some kind of First Amendment violation. Does anyone in their right mind actually think the reason the founders penned the First Amendment was so that foreign powers could collect sensitive data on American citizens? It's not a I don't even care about the data. It's it's sending kids videos of 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 creepy let's just let's just degenerate behavior things that will lead them to self-harm will increase mm -hmm. it's it I will don't increase it's self-harm yeah. not good uh, no yeah however i do think that should this go through the end result is let's say tiktok says no we we will not divest you know by dance will not will not divest we will not sell the app store and the play store remove the app that's it you can still open up tiktok on your phone you can still watch any TikTok you want. People will sell phones that still have TikTok <laughs> on them. No, I'm serious. This is like what yep. happened with Flappy Bird. People yep. will do that. They'll hold onto their phone that has TikTok. And not Android be... phones. Android phones Ooh. will simply go to TikTok.us and click download and they're fine. Oh, wow. Mm. But the app store, because Apple is a closed uh, operating system, will mm -hmm. not allow you to download it with, through their store. So you'd have to jailbreak the phone and then use an external store. But as so long as TikTok isn't using US services, you are still allowed to use TikTok, it's not banned. So they would sue and they'd say, oh, my business was hurt because of this. And they'd say, and, and what is the problem? It's legislation. Congress is allowed to legislate. TikTok is not banned. You're still able to use it. What's mm -hmm. the problem? The action taken by the government resulted in a smaller audience size. I don't think you can sue for that. Well, I think that what makes TikTok so valuable and addictive is really the algorithm that they set up from the very beginning where uh, anybody can basically blow up overnight. And I mean, I saw it happen with a lot of the people I represented. I mean, you had somebody that had 10,000 followers and then two months later they had 10 million. And so uh, I think what's happening too is even though a lot of the different platforms have tried to copy uh, TikTok and the algorithm, it's like you saw it with Twitter. like to unwind all the code and to uh like build in what you want it's not that simple it's mm -hmm. it's complex it's complex and uh even i think uh chamath and david Sachs were talking about if it does divest like 
if if uh, nobody's going to go through every line of code and like make sure that there's no like Easter eggs uh, that the Chinese are still uh, in control of or whatever. Um, so, yeah, but as far as it being an app that uh, is probably damaging to young people and the way that their brains are you know, forming and all that, 100 percent. But uh, is that something that the government controls or, you know, that we vote on as Americans? I don't know. I mean, I, I definitely think that is. like TikTok is uh, ultimately more harmful than it is good for Americans. Um, the argument that the CEO of TikTok made, especially when he testified before Congress, was, well, so many people have businesses and careers that are now TikTok based. So you're actually hurting them economically. And that's terrible. And you can't do that. <laughs> uh, the fact is that we have other forms of social media. If you wanted to be an influencer, most influencers aren't just only on one platform. Well, and the funny thing is, if you look at the, uh, I think it's TikTok creators, Instagram, all they were trying to like get people to like call your local yeah. uh, congressman or senator they or whatever. people. And all the comments were like, we don't even like you guys don't take care of us anymore. You don't pay us. Like they were, there was so many influencers, like big accounts, they were, they were turning their back on TikTok. And so, um, you know, is YouTube going to become more powerful meta when, if it does get just shut down? Yes. But does that give people opportunity to start new things, Twitter? Um, so. The funny thing is, if someone made a social media app right now and just gave everyone fake followers, they'd all be like, oh, TikTok's dumb. Like, how do you even verify any of those numbers on any of these social media platforms? Th that's it's what tough, we would all ask when TikTok with, started. Like, are this remember, is real? Rem remember yeah, uh, yeah. Facebook video? So 10 years ago, I'm at a meeting with a big, major cable channel network. And we're talking about... Um, YouTube versus Facebook. And I said, well, YouTube's obviously it. It's the engagement you want. And they were like, yeah, but look at the views you get on Facebook. And I was like, but those aren't real views. Yeah. And they were like, it doesn't matter. When we go to advertisers and we say, we get a million views on YouTube and 10 million on Facebook, we, we increase our revenue 10x. And then I'm like, how long is that going to, these are not engaging views. No one's buying. And they were like, Facebook video is it. And there was a big scandal where apparently Facebook got sued or something because the video views that advertisers were paying for were like not actual. So, uh, you know, I'm not gonna accuse TikTok of anything. I'm just saying, if well, someone made an app called, um, you know, KitKat. Tim Talk, and, and uh, yours. Sure, your and, and people signed up, and then all of a sudden it was like, well, I'm on TikTok, KitKat, and Instagram, and I have 10 million followers on KitKat. They'd be like, I'm going there. Now, you gotta be careful with it. If you just gave someone 10 million followers, nobody would believe it. Back during the MySpace era, it was really funny to see these bands that was like a random guy and he had 4 billion plays on his music. And it's just like, dude, you went too far. <laughs> you wanna give yourself like 10,000 so it looks like you're an up and coming band mm -hmm. and yeah. then you get the opening act on, on, a, you know, on a tour or something. But if you put multi-platinum, like I guess he's going to the club to pick up girls or something, good <laughs> well, luck. Yeah, well, and it's, it's really troubling because the way you would usually be able to tell whether the views were authentic was engagement. There's just a certain ratio. You're going to get right. a certain number of comments per actual view. You're going to get a certain number of upvotes and downvotes per actual view. If a, a video says it has, you know, a hundred thousand views, but then there's five likes and, and two dislikes. Well, it, it's probably not genuine, off, yeah. uh, but now that we have uh, AI and these bots are going to be more sophisticated, they'll be able to much more easily fake engagement. You I'm used to be able to fake views, but not engagement. Now you're going to be able to fake engagement. I'm going to give the shout out to uh, Dave Kroos mm. in the regular chat. He says, Facebook contributed to the Arab Spring. TikTok is, could do that here. And that's true. And that's why a, a big reason why it's a national security threat. Whether you agree or disagree isn't, isn't what doesn't matter. The Arab Spring was largely organized through Facebook and Twitter, particularly in, in Egypt. I believe the... Um, the woman's name was, was it Asma Mafus? I could be getting the name wrong. Uh, used Facebook to organize people to come and protest against the government, and it toppled the government twice. So if China has an app with this much influence in the U.S., well, good luck, I guess. You're going to become a vassal state to the Chinese Communist Party. Good luck. Well, isn't it funny that when social media was used to uh, incite the Arab Spring, you had uh, political leaders like Obama just praising social media platforms as these uncensored paradises and basically suggesting that this is the way uh, for the future. And as soon as those uh, same platforms use it, I'm, I'm not talking about TikTok here, but 
Twitter, Facebook, generally speaking, and particularly Twitter, now that Musk is in charge, uh, now that they're being used to like give Americans a voice to speak up against our government, now they're dangerous, now they need to be shut down, now we have to be very concerned about what's happening on these platforms. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, American platforms are all kinds of messed up and, and nefarious <laughs> too, but I think the, the added element of a, a foreign national government that is directly, you know, that has ties to the company's operation is just a risk I'm not willing to take. Um, and... You know, I, I think TikTok is um, TikTok is so interesting because I think it may be, may be really spurred um, influencer culture and social media dependence, especially for business uh, in an unusual way well, because be, it blew up during COVID. That's yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, that was really the reason uh, the reason Taylor Lorenz, in my opinion, wrote the the bad article about me was because at that time. Everything was, there was no entertainment happening in Hollywood. Everybody was locked in. And so I had a bunch of social media stars. And so I had like, you know, a golden nugget that everybody wanted. And so uh, her talent agency, you know, my opinion, like, that's why she went after me uh, because I had something valuable, which was these influencers that were creating content on, on TikTok. But I don't know. I think, do you think that, uh, uh, do you think that, uh, like, these people are allowed to turn up the volume or, or turn the volume down, right? They're allowed to say, you know, you're not allowed to dance around in a bikini. And I'm not saying there should be more censorship, but is there a reason why you think that they're not turning down the volume on, let's say, anti-Semitism or, uh, you know, war? I don't know. Like, they, they, they decide what they're going to put. On all platforms, like, you even look at Elon Musk, right? The ADL goes after X. Elon travels to Israel. He comes back. He says, we're going to take this seriously. The U.S., I don't think actually cares about Jewish, Jewish people or black people. I don't think they care about any of that. I think they care about military policy. And Israel is a key component in U.S. military policy in the Middle East. And so they're just like, we can't allow sentiment against this. But they're losing that because of TikTok. So when TikTok allows for this massive, I mean, it, it, it really is simple. When, when X allows... Uh, criticism of Israel or anti-Semitism, the, the advertisers come down super, super hard. What can you do to TikTok? Funded by the CCP or external sources, they don't care mm, for the advertisers. They can do whatever they want. They can't control it, so they, they, they have to stop it. I don't think the issue is Jewish people. I think the U.S. is concerned that we are going to have a youth, uh, like the sentiment in this country among young people is anti-Israel. I tweeted this. I think support for Israel is done. You've got the MAGA side, which is anti-interventionist, many of whom deeply support Israel, but are like, but I ain't paying for it. And then you have the left populists, which are just like Israel's evil and they don't want to pay for it. Give it 20 to 40 years and U.S. military policy in the Middle East is flipped on its head. Massive advantage for China and Russia and the BRICS nations. So right. the deep state is between a rock and a hard place because, well, they supported it. They, didn't, they ignored the problems. They're super arrogant and they reap what they've sown. But like, so the platform, though, is able to say, uh, for example, if you talk about gender ideology, you're walking on a, a you know, people have gotten suspended, banned, right, from on YouTube because they talk about the gender ideology situation. And so d does that then make it so more people are, uh, so one side basically of the argument is silenced um, and the other is allowed to uh, grow and <laughs> be the popular right. thing, right? Um that's the, the, point. It, the, the fact is we're giving the platforms the ability to shape culture in that way because so many people want to be content creators. They say, we got to follow the rules. So we're mm -hmm. not allowed to criticize uh, gender ideology and that stuff because YouTube says we're not. Um, that's where I think it gets dangerous because <laughs> the, who are the people pulling the strings at so the if platforms? I, if I were going to rank the platforms in terms of free speech, you could certainly, it depends on how reductive you want to get and how small you want to get. Gab, for obvious reasons has a really high free speech rating. Minds.com does. In terms of the big players right now, Rumble is probably the best, followed by X. And, and they go back and forth a little bit, but I, th I do think Rumble is substantially better than, than X on free speech. Um, X, for instance, has a misgendering policy, so it's like, what do you do? YouTube actually is not as bad as a lot of people claim it. Not to claim it is, but it is still... It is a massive leap. You go from X and Rumble, and then you're in the gutter of, of censorship. So I will stress, YouTube is very bad on censorship. They're very, very bad. I'm just saying, people think YouTube is like, oh, YouTube's so bad, they're doing this. It's YouTube's bad, agreed. Facebook is insane. TikTok is the worst. 
TikTok will censor you in yeah. two seconds with no for no reason just because they're like, my assumption is behind the scenes, if you run afoul of their narrative, they don't care. They don't need to abide by any of the rules. There's no contracts and nothing you can do about it. They ban you and they laugh. Yeah. Facebook at least has to contend with the with with US lawmakers and lawsuits. Facebook is the next worst. And then I would say uh, Facebook and Instagram and then YouTube. And so if we were doing like a scale of like uh, one being the worst censorship platform and 100 being the the best platform for free speech, Rumble is probably like a 93. X is like an 85 or 80. Right. And then YouTube is 23. Facebook is 15. Instagram is similar. And then TikTok yeah. is a two. Uh, two years ago, I got banned for a month for going live and just explaining the lawsuit uh, against Taylor Lorenz in the New York Times. And the reason was for harassment and yeah. bullying. And I'm like, what? Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And become a member over at Timcast.com for uncensored members only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out and we'll see you all next time.